Yeah. What's up, Redeemers? Um, it's your boy, Lo. I'm Nick. I'm Curtis. I'm Nas. And I'm Ty. This right here, we haven't done this in a while. Um, I wanted my brothers, my Hayuns, and my Nano songs to react to a song that I heard that I thought was kind of dope. And I couldn't believe it ain't get as much buzz as like a lot of other songs or whatever. It's a KRB song with one familiar voice, Davida. We all familiar with her. Mm. Love her. And uh, Cold, but the, the main artist is called Cold Kuntz. If y'all know anything about Cold Kuntz, let us know her a little bit more. So, yeah, we're going to get right in. It's called Let You In. Go ahead, Nas. I'm at time. Sorry, bro. Oh. Something I've heard, I can't think of it. Have flashbacks to shit. <laughs> yeah, letting somebody in. Yeah, you would never let in again. Yo, this song felt like, like, like fall weather, comforters, Tim's jeans, baggy hoodies, and breakups. <laughs> like, like now? That's what now. That's like, how it fall. felt, man. Like from the game. winter is coming. Mm-hmm. It's like long hallways. You just walk into your ex door and shit. Flashback into that. Like I just, bruh. Hey. Took you to this a place. Song, this song took me somewhere, man. This took me back to 2017. Man. The most toxic relationship I ever had. We good now, but we not together, but this is... Honestly, yo, yeah. Like, toxic time, bro. Like, <laughs> this I'm, song made you miss a woman you can't have around. This, like, 
made me miss somebody I don't want to be with again. Yeah. It brought up feelings I, I didn't have. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, I don't want to feel these feelings, but I love this song. Like it's a vibe for sure. Oh, so all uh, her tracks that I've listened to or stuff that you've played sounds like something. Um, it almost seems like it always has to be like a live performance of something. Yeah. With strobe lights on and a live band and everything like that. Acoustic, like acoustic, real, acoustic version. Real intimate, yeah. yeah, everything it sounds like you need to be sitting across the dinner table from her while she's singing to you or something. I, I love that woman's good. voice, man. That she has a good voice, voice though. Yeah, she's she's um, yeah, you felt the emotion yeah. behind everything oh, that she was saying. I don't want to be disrespectful when I, I got, compare yeah, her to Janine Iko because bro, it, that's it, not that's it, a hell of a compliment. That's, it's a very good compliment. I low key think um, that's kind of like her. Uh, not, I ain't gonna say inspiration, but I think that's where yeah. she's going for it musically. Because <laughs> most of the stuff that I listen to, I just get that same. Janae's like probably my favorite uh, person in female life. Female artist. Oh, that's yeah. I'm not gonna lie. I'll, mm. I'll marry her. If you're her. watching this, I love you. Mm. Yo, stop, t- stop telling my girl you love her, bro. I'm sorry. Light our incense sticks. I'll be home in the loop. Get the crystals out. <laughs> oh, it's a damn shame what happened to Mick. Uh, <laughs> this, song, this song took him somewhere. <laughs> yeah. But nah, yeah, I just... Uh, well, yeah, talk go ahead. I mean, that survived. Like y'all said, it kind of takes you somewhere. It takes you somewhere that might have been good for a point in time, mm. but in hindsight, it's like, nah, that's not where I want to be. Yeah. But, you know, this will make you think about the good times you did have when you were in those moments. Mm-hmm. And it's bittersweet because you know you can't go back there. Like, that's somewhere you and can't go back there. Yeah, that bitch could be on be fire and I wouldn't spit no. on her. No, to me, it definitely felt like wow, it was like was a nostalgic, so <laughs> like a nostalgic bittersweetness. Like it's just like a. Ref- you had to be like even uh, during the reacting. I mean, I'm I'm pretty sure I wasn't making any faces. Like I, it just like you just in your mind, just like reflecting, mm. just kind of thinking, mm. and the production, like like how you know calm and like somber the beat was and everything like that, and how it just it just felt like it wasn't you know, like there didn't need to be any progression almost. It was just. Yeah. It was just something that, um, mm. and the, the artist's voice too. I'm I don't know that I've heard anything from them particularly, but you felt the emotion behind every word, mm. yeah. and I don't know necessarily the dynamic between you know um, the two artists singing in it. I don't know if it's like I'm the guy in the relationship, you're the girl, or anything like that, or if it's like you know. Yeah, but but it just cool. I could really see like like I was like just in, like you were saying like envisioning a music video, just like how mm-hmm. you know that's. Uh, that's pretty much what I got from what I get from this song because I've been listening to. I think I've had this song for about literally since we went since I had the, the what I call the low night or whatever here. Mm-hmm. I went more into a deep dive with the Vita, and I think it was maybe like a week later I found this. I'm like, oh no, nah, I gotta have this one. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. And I think they are speaking from her perspective and his perspective yeah. in the song. Uh, Davida is the girl, obviously, and then Cold is the dude that sang. I think the lead artist is a producer, Code K, or whatever. Like I said, we don't know how to pronounce that. Yeah. But yeah, all in all, I just think this is like a real dope song. I love the vibe. Uh, you know, I love Davida almost as much as I love uh, Moon musically and everything like that. So yeah, man, this definitely brought us some feelings from, like I said, my last like real serious relationship and. I will never let you in again. That that shit is true. <laughs> You're dead, bitch, when I see you. You're dead. <laughs> <laughs> like, but nah, I ain't on that. Nah, I ain't on that either. It's all dead, dead to the heart. I'm, act, I'm actually healed now. I'm not, I'm not yeah. toxic love no more. I was bad, but I'm chilling. But yeah, I love this song. And y'all, can y'all tell us why, like, I mean, maybe niggas just don't like it. But <laughs> tell us why, like, stuff like this don't really pop off as much because... Everything I've read, ironically, says a lot of people over in SK don't like uh, idol music. They like KRB and K hip hop more mm-hmm. than idol music. But the numbers, like yeah. you know, what I'm saying, clearly say different. And that's I'm just like kind of confused on it because like I feel like this would be like I said, this one of them songs would be like a Brent Fias type hit or you know what I'm saying something and like and that. And what's wild is we we always have music debates and we only bring up analytics when it's in our favor. Mm-hmm. Um, me, I try not to discuss analytics when it comes to record sales and other things because numbers can be misleading, misleading yeah. and analytics aren't always correct. I don't know, Lo, honestly, why mm-hmm. a lot of the K rap stuff and K R and B stuff doesn't isn't as successful because I see the same thing in chats. Yeah, they Ooh. say you know. 
we love such and such, but when you look at the numbers, it just doesn't equate to the yeah, love. And I'm you could say that the idols, I guess, have like a worldwide thing, but it still just doesn't make sense to me because yeah. I'm pretty sure if an idol has 800 million views, yeah. those uh, views are coming from SK as yeah, well. Exactly. So, Wait, so I, I, if I, I, I could just. Sorry. Well, no, no, go, go ahead. Well, I was just going to say, if I could just add one thing, it was that um, that's the thing I really enjoy about, you know, just reacting in general is that, you know, we're giving exposure and getting exposure to the from these artists mm -hmm. and from, you know, the subscribers. They're putting us on the music that we haven't heard. You're putting us on the music that we haven't heard. Mm -hmm. And in turn, maybe, you know, this puts artists like this in the mindset of you guys, our redeemers. So I just... I just think, in general, like that's a really cool thing to be able to. Yeah, because yeah, since Lowe put me on the yeah. stuff like uh, Chancellor Simon uh, Twelve, mm -hmm. Simon Donovic, uh, I've listened to more Moon stuff. I just don't get it. I don't get why the numbers aren't there. And we would love to do more reactions for things like that, but it seems like some of y'all don't care about some of the stuff needed. That, that and that's part of it too, because <laughs> we definitely would. Do more of this and like my this right here. Yeah, yeah man. my mindset with this was also like, all right, maybe some of our redeemers don't know this song too. So let's mm -hmm. see if they will like it. So you know, we'll see if y'all if y'all like it. That's kind of how we you know how we do things. Obviously, we not just uh, uh, in it for the numbers kind of right. uh, mm -hmm. channel. We also like really like a, a lot of stuff that we react to or you know everything like that mm -hmm. or. You know, we go into it with an optimistic mind, but this is one of those things where I figured, you know, I talked to my bros, and I'm just like, all right, let's see if we can kind of put this one out there, mm -hmm. something a little different mm -hmm. outside of idol music. And I've had, uh, not to cut you off, I've had honest conversations with people on YouTube and the Patreons and told them that at the end of the day, if we link and we have five hours, yeah. it's only but so many videos that we can do, so we got to make the best of our time. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that, that's so, really you what know, it comes so down to. Not to mention, mm -hmm. we got, with the Patreon, we have to show people anybody that's going to do business with us or anything like that we got to make sure we take care of them and stuff like that so that's part of our we have to make time in our schedule for that as well as do other stuff that's not requested and everything so stuff like this is a specialty but you know with the right amount of love if y'all y'all if y'all fuck with it you know we'll just do it we'll a continue lot more to keep doing it you know just gotta let us know i always tell a closed mouth don't get fed yeah because so. sometimes i'm not gonna lie i do see some names in the comments i seen jay park um, they show love to the purge video. Oh yeah, I saw like it that. too. I saw, I saw like that shit was this shit was going up. I a saw Jay Park. I saw um, another song with Davida. I wanted to show y'all, but we'll do that another time. Um, I think it's Yugi Yugi Yam Yugi Yam. I want you around. Uh, Gray is another one. Gray I, is a person. Gray I've is seen. not an idol though, but like no. he does some decent numbers. So maybe we'll do one of his songs because she he got a song with her too. So. We be having to check that stuff too because they told me Jay Park was an idol. No, he was. He yeah, was in a group he, and got kicked he out. He was a group got kicked out, and then him and Simon Donovic, uh, Do Dominic did the uh, AMOG joint. Mm -hmm. So I, I did a little research He's too. With AMOG signed to Rock Nation. Mm -hmm. Um, but I know Simon. I know he stepped down as a CEO yeah. and just focuses on music and I stuff. Don't blame but him, bro. Look at um, yeah, yeah, okay. Get money, son. Um, so yeah, y'all. It's just, like I said, we ain't gonna bore y'all to death with everything going on here. But it's just we. Y'all got to tell us what y'all want, and we really going to move how y'all want us to move. Um, did anybody else have anything to add, though, about the song? Um, when we first started listening to K-pop, like, being new to it, not having really heard it before, I see what y'all saying about how music like this, how does it not get the buzz? Mm -hmm. Because to me, and I hope nobody gets offended when I say this, but I relate more to the K-R&B. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, oh, and, well, and the rap. You know me. I already yeah. told you that was like. Yeah. I mean, just I uh, have something heard that miss. resonates more for me too, personally. Yeah, like I haven't heard a miss. It's just that when you can listen to music like this, and we don't even have the lyrics in front of us sitting here, mm -hmm. but like it takes you somewhere else. Mm -hmm. When you can do that, we not seeing the translations of the words that you speaking. And you felt this. And you felt it. That's something where without it's just the like, visuals too, right? I didn't, you didn't even need it. You had your own in your head, just exactly. you all sitting there flashbacking on different situations. So yep. when you have that type of music, I I don't know how it doesn't get more buzz because stuff like this comes out here and it gets buzz, man. Someone will like, let us know. I know politics and probably everything. What in the I like that they did here. with this was the first half of the verse is in Korean, mm -hmm. the second half is in English, especially hers because she well she's from actually from Chicago mm. and then moved to Korea, so her English and 
talking and understanding the words because a lot of times she be like shit is lit or mm-hmm. I get the fuck shit like she you know she get busy so and then uh, cold his was um, it had English in it the second part it's a, obviously the enunciation pronunciation mm-hmm. is a little different but it still was cool so I think that was that was pretty dope and I liked her outro on the song but oh and this production is just just there man mm-hmm. that shit is just smooth as hell but. Like we said, man, if y'all like this, y'all fuck with it, we'll see. Talk to us. Give us some answers Mm -hmm. on how y'all feel about stuff like this. And road to three milli, road to a dub. Don't send that risky text tonight. It's not worth it after listening to this. (laughs) (laughs)